If you want cheap games, Xbox Live and BSN codes, check out G2A in the description down below. Use code ZERO at checkout for discount. So what is going on guys, welcome to another Garden Warfare 2 video, today I'm going to be talking about all of the character changes for the zombie side coming in the next content update for Garden Warfare 2 called Trouble in Zombopolis Part 1. Now I have done a video talking about the plant character changes, so if you do want to go check that out I will leave the link down in the description and I'll also leave a link down in the description to the Plants vs Zombies page where you can read all this information for yourself along with a lot of other information coming in the next content update, that link will also be down in the description. So to start off with this zombie character balancing, we're going to start off with the imps. So first off, there are a few changes across all of the imp characters. They've increased the hitbox size of the imp while he is moving. This is going to make it easier for the plants to target the imp and take him down. They thought he was just that little bit too difficult to take out when he was moving, so they have increased the hitbox size, so it's going to be a bit easier for you all to take the imps out, of course, while they are moving. They have also reduced the initial and regular cooldown times of mechs by 30 seconds. That means you're going to have to wait 30 seconds less to call your mech in at the start of a game and during the middle of a game. The main reason for this is because in Team Vanquish games, they did say on average they last about 6 minutes and they feel like that players who play as an imp in Team Vanquish games, they are only going to get maybe one shot at calling in the mech because they do take a while to load into the game. So they thought if they do reduce them by 30 seconds, you're going to be able to get that mech in maybe twice in a game and uh, it's going to be uh, a lot more hectic playing at these games because there's going to be more mechs brought in the games and uh, I don't know if it's going to be a good thing or a bad thing but we're going to have to wait and see to find out if it's going to be just a little bit too too much having mechs being able to deploy 30 seconds because half a minute is a long time so we're going to have to wait and see to see how effective that is and also speaking about mechs they have increased the stamina for all mechs by 20 seconds so what this means is that if you are not taken out by uh, your health deployment leading to zero, you're going to be able to stay in your mech for an extra 20 seconds. Moving over to the variants for the imp class, they have only focused on changing the Z7 mech because they did feel like this mech was underperforming compared to the rest of the mech variants. Now they have increased the knockback for the Omniblade along with also reducing the reloading time for the Omniblade by 5 seconds. That means that you are going to be able to use the Omniblade more frequent when you are in your mech and combine that with also having increased stamina by 20 seconds. These mechs are going to get a lot more powerful. They've also increased the homing effectiveness of the biotic pull projectile. What I think this means is once you do use your ability they will get pulled towards the mech more accurately, kind of in the center of your mech so that means you're not going to miss the omni blade if you do want to use it and they have also increased the biotic pull force so that your enemies will get pulled towards the mech faster as well. The final change they have made or the final changes they have made to the Z7 mech is they've increased the blast radius for the biotic pull projectile so that means that you don't need to be as accurate when you do want to pull some plants towards you and you do also have a chance of pulling multiple enemies at you at the same time and they've also reduced the reloading time for the biotic pull by 5 seconds so you will be able to use that ability more often as well. Moving over to the Super Brains character class they've made a lot of changes to the turbo twist because they don't want it to be used as a main primary attack for the Super Brains character class. That's what a lot of Super Brain characters was doing. They would then try and get into the plant's face as quickly as possible and instead of using your melee attack and punching them, you would go straight into Turbo Twister and take them all out. So they've made a few changes to the Turbo Twister kind of attack. First off, they have reduced the damage absorption for the Turbo Twister by 15%. This means that if you are playing as a plant, you're going to be able to damage them a lot more They've also slightly increased the Turbo Twister cooldown, so the Super Brains characters are not going to be able to use the Turbo Twister as often, and it's not going to be spammed as much. They've also slightly reduced the Turbo Twister movement speed, you know what that means, and they've also removed the ability to cancel the Super Brains Turbo Twister, so that means once he does go into the Turbo Twister, he has to wait the entire time to actually finish his spin before he can start to try and get out of there or punch you in the face as well. Now there are some changes to Electro Brains as well, if you did not know there was some bugs with Electro Brains where his damage was being inverted, so that means he did more damage to the place that he wasn't directly attacking with his beam, rather than the other way around, so they've actually fixed those bugs, they've also significantly decreased the damage and range of the Electric Arcs, these are the Arcs that go off the character that you are attacking, 
and kind of hits the other plants around him and they've also slightly decreased the rate of fire for his punches. Fingers crossed he's not going to be nowhere near as powerful because oh man he is definitely a character if you saw a few of those in the game you were dead. Next we have Captain Deadbeard and they have made an ability change to his barrel blast where you can actually cancel out of the barrel provided that the fuse has not been lit. The only downside to this ability is that it will still be classed as that you have used it so uh, that's one downside to this ability but at least they're giving you the option to cancel out of it if you don't want to use it. Next, we have changes to Captain Shirtbite. They've reduced the explosion damage from 16 to 10. This is one of two things. This is either his shotgun when you are not zooming in. The damage has been reduced from 16 to 10. Or if you are attacking a plant and you hit them directly, maybe you do some damage to the plant next to it and that damage has been reduced from 16 to 10. Although I don't actually fully understand the explosion damage for Captain Shirtbite anyway. And the final changes we have are for Captain Cannon. They've increased the projectile movement speed of his weapon. They've also increased the inner blast radius for manual detonation. So if you do manually detonate his weapons, the actual size of the blast will be increased. And they've also removed fall off for impact damage. What this one means is that it doesn't matter how far away or how close you are to a plant, if you directly hit a plant with your weapon without exploding it, the damage will still be the same. And I think it is a 40 damage. So no matter where you are, if you do hit them directly and you don't explode your weapon, you will do 40 damage to the plants. We have one change for the foot soldier character class and that is the tank commander. They've reduced the impact damage by 5. They was going to reduce the reloading upgrades but they've decided to go back on that so the only change for the tank commander is they've reduced the damage of impact by 5. And the final changes that we do have are for the scientist class. They've reduced the damage for the chemist from 40 to 36. For the zoologist they've reduced the magazine capacity from 9 to 6 which is a big one they've also reduced the projectile distance by 0.5 meters so that means that the zoologist is going to have to get closer to the plants before they can actually deal damage to them and they've also reduced the damage from the marine biologist from 30 to 25 but there we go guys those are all the changes for the characters on the zombie side coming in the next content update for garden warfare 2 let me know your thoughts on these in the comment section down below let me know about the ones that you are happy about let me know on the ones that you are not happy about i'm sure the scientists is going to be in that category thank you very much for watching this video guys if you do want to go check out the plant side i will leave the link down in the description or you can click the annotation on screen now and uh, hopefully guys i'll catch you in the next one